Hi Stamping Friends, welcome back. Artisa recently sent me some Noir products to play with and today I'm going to share some real brush pens. I was really excited to receive this 48 pack. They also come in 12, 24, 48 and 96 and they do have a little grid on the back but it's really tiny and hard for my old eyes to see. They include a water pen as you can dilute and move the ink around with it. And in this package, I got four trays of these fabulous pens. Does your heart skip a little beat when you get new products? Mine sure does. A little about the pens. They're black plastic with the name and the color printed on them. The nub on the end and around the brush tip are also colored and they have a nice tight fitting lid. There's also a good sized nylon brush. I have a few of these pens from different manufacturers, so let's do a little comparison. I'm also comparing the Zig Clean Markers and the Altenew pen. Altenew has a nice clean barrel so you can see how much ink you have left. The other two don't. They are all AP certified non-toxic. The colors and the numbers are well marked on the barrel. And uh, other than that, um, there is a slight difference in the tips. I'm finding that the Altenew one is uh, a little bit skinny and the Arteza one is a little bit long and that takes a little bit of getting used to. As far as how they work, here's the comparison of all three. So you color down some color and then pick up your watercolor pen and blend it out. And I found that the Arteza one was a little bit, uh, took a little bit more work to blend, um, but not enough to make me stop using it. I swatched out all the colors and added the numbers before I started and there is a nice even selection of colors although I personally would like a few more greens but you know me in green and blue. Here's my practice coloring on Canson cold pressed uh, paper and I also swatched out the colors I used on a scrap. And so let me color a bit um, and I'm going to show you how I like to work with these pens. I'm going to start off with some pinks. I'm using three shades and you can refer back to your swatcher for three that would go together. So uh, similar to Copics, a light, medium and a dark where possible. Some of the greens only have two colors and so you may need to bring in a blue or a yellow to carry on with that. And so when I'm starting a new project, I will swatch my colors and then that way I write them all down and I've got them um, for when I do my PDF files for you on my blog posts. And I also save these in a binder for future reference. So for coloring, I like to start in the shadows where the, the little uh, marks are that the artist put into this stamp. And I'm starting with the darkest color, starting at the bottom and pulling it up. And then I'm going to switch over to the medium color and I'm going to add that a little bit to the dark and then a little bit farther up. And then I'm going to take my water pen and I'm going to blend these two together. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to use these uh, that I like. I'm sure everybody's got their own thing. Uh, this is just what I like to do with mine. So you see that it fades quite a bit when you blend the water in and uh, you can blend those colors together quite nicely. And I'm going to continue and carry on and color the rest of the flower in this manner. And I'll just speed it up a little bit here for you. You also notice that I'm working one petal at a time. You don't want to let this ink dry, otherwise it gets really, really hard to move. So working in small sections will ensure that you keep it damp and you'll have your best results in moving this ink around. So this flower ended up a little bit lighter than I wanted it to, so I'm going back in and it's still damp, so it's really easy to blend in a little bit more of that darker color and then you can just pull it up and blend it in. So I just wanted to add a little bit more detail to the shadows. So moving on, I'm going to do kind of an orangey colored flower. And again, I've got a light, medium and dark. And this time I'm going to blend with the light. So I'm starting with the darkest, like I did with the pink flower, in where the shadows are that are marked in the stamp. And then I'm going to add the medium color. And again, I'm overlapping a little bit into the dark, but going up a little bit higher. So exactly the same as when you're doing your Copics and coloring. And then this time, I'm going to take this lightest one because it's a really, really light orange. It's almost a flush color. And I'm going to use it to blend the colors. And it will also provide my light spot in the center of my flower. So this is a nice way of coloring with some of these lighter colors. They blend beautifully together. 
and it makes it a little bit quicker as well. And look at the depth of the color. It's really nice. And again, I'm just going to finish coloring this one, each petal at a time, going back in with the dark, adding my hash lines, so to speak, coming back in with a little bit lighter color, and then blending it out with my light one. And I'm just going to speed this up while I finish the flower and you'll see that I use the medium and the light near the top because I want a little bit of the light shining and I blend it out a little bit with the water brushes too because I don't want it as dark as the bottom of the outside of the petals. Again I use my water brush to lighten up the top just a tiny little bit and uh, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to dry brush with yellow. So this is a nice way to add some highlights and some brightness to your uh, coloring and I'm just going around some of the darker areas or where I think maybe the sunshine is shining on my uh, pretty little tulips and adding a little bit of yellow. And you could wash this out if you want, but if you do, you're going to activate the ink that's underneath of it. So be very careful about that. That's why I prefer to dry brush. For the leaves, I went with kind of the mossy greens, and there's only two of them. So I added that dark blue, which ends up being a really pretty bluey green that uh, goes with the leaves. So once again, I'm starting with the dark green and adding that where my shadows are, adding a little bit of the blue kind of right over top of my other green and then half filling in with the lighter color coming back in with my clean water brush and blending them together. Now to clean your water brush all you have to do is squeeze it a tiny little bit and then gently wipe it on a piece of paper towel and the color that is in the tip will just go onto the paper towel. It's a nylon tip so don't smash it up and down otherwise you'll bend all the fibers and it won't work very well. So as you can see here I've got this all blended but it came out kind of light so if you want to darken it you can add a little bit more color and uh, I do that on purpose it's a little easier to add some color it's much harder to take it away so I'm going to do another leaf over here but I've sped it up just a little bit same colors and then going back in with the light green sorry my camera needs a little bit more to look at there's too much white in my picture and I'm coming back in adding a little bit more dark underneath that petal and I'm going to blend it with my water brush these three colors are really pretty together. I'm actually very impressed with the brightness and the colors in these markers. They're really nice in these pens. Sorry, I need to stop calling them markers. Next up, I'm going to color the Colorado Craft Company Big Birthday Cake. And I wanted to show you another way you can pick up the ink. You'll see that I have just smudged some onto my glass mat. I'm picking it up with my water brush and I'm adding it to my paper. And this time I'm working on Strathmore Bristol because I wanted to see how it blended on this type of paper as well. And as you can see, you get a little bit of a lighter look by doing this technique, but it is certainly pretty all on its own. Me, I like bright stuff. So here's me going back in and sorry, I'm going to have to move something so that my camera has something to focus on. There's too much white going on there. So I just moved my tulips in there a little bit to give my camera something to look at and we'll get back to the coloring. And I'm adding some more and then I'm going to come back in with the water pen. Now I'm going to work my way through each layer of this and I'm going to make a rainbow card or piece of cake so that you can see a variety of the different colors and how beautiful they are. They they really have done a great job of selecting nice bright colors and it's so easy to dilute them out for lighter colors that you know it's easy to have like a hundred pens because all you have to do is add water. So I'm using the lighter one and I split my tip a little bit with uh, the lid when I put it back on and you saw that I just used my fingers to squeeze it back together. So if you find a spot where you do that to your pen, it's really easy to fix. Okay, so now we're going to come in with a pinky purple. And again, I'm adding the color at the top and then grabbing my water pen and I'm going to pull that color down. So it adds some detail to my picture, creating some shadows and some highlights. 
so some deeper areas and some lighter areas. And of course I could switch to a uh, watercolor pen with a bigger tip on it as well, which would make that um, blend a little bit faster. I'm using a fine tip. Um, this pen is not from the set, but the one that's in the set is just fine. I've used it as well. So my darker purple. And again, I swatched these all out. That way, I like to have a reference to uh, look back to when I find color combinations that I really like. So here's a third technique for you. See, I am picking the ink right off the pen and using my water brush to add it. So you can do it that way. So there's the light version. Or you can do it onto your glass mat and pick it up from there for the medium version. So on the right, it's right from the pen. On the left, it is from the glass mat. And in the center, it is directly from the tip of the pen with the water brush, giving you three different shades of the same purple. So I'm just dipping back in and finishing this off. I'm moving over to a light and a dark blue. And I can't remember which one's darker, so I'm using my margin to figure that out. And you can also write the numbers in there. I do this a lot when I know I'm going to cut something out. That way I can keep track of it. But I've also got a piece of paper off to the side where I record it all. Okay, so obviously I've got this sped up. We're going to work our way through this pretty turquoise. And this is a wider piece, so I'm adding a little bit more color so that I can blend it in. And then I'm going to go back with the darker one to add a little bit of the shadow and darken it up a bit. And just pulling that down. These are really fun to play with. You can get a lot of different shades. If I wasn't doing a video, I would probably sit and play with this for an hour. <laughs> Okay, so this is the kind of greeny blue. It's, uh, it is a really pretty color. I'm quite enthralled with it. I think I'm going to do another card with it for next week. I have a Simon Says background stamp that I think this would be really pretty on. So again, blending those two colors together, adding a whole bunch of dark up the top, and blending it in. Grab the wrong pen there. I should have done the lighter one. <laughs> Oh, nice little bit of contrast. There we go. Okay, so light and dark green. I'm going to start with the light. Oh, that was the dark, that's the light. I'm going to do both at the same time, living on the edge, but I'm coloring quite quickly, so it should be all right. You definitely do not want to leave it for very long, otherwise you'll have a really hard time moving the colors. And just adding a little bit more of that bright green because I really want that to pop. And then the final two colors are a light and a dark yellow, and you see that I blend those in as well. And uh, I'm adding a little bit more of the color to the right-hand side because there is the icing on the outside, so it's creating a little bit of a shadow, so that's why I'm doing that in those corners. And there we go, there's my two yellows. So the yellow is... Um, I'm finding the lighter colors maybe a little bit harder to blend than the darker colors, um, probably because they have to dilute them a little bit to get them lighter. I don't know the reason why. That's a guess. Um, but if you work in small sections, you can move the color around. And I find that just adding a little bit more helps it move around too. For the icing on the top and down the side of the cakes, I decided to add a little bit of pink just to blend it in there. So maybe we're having a little bit of strawberry icing, which is my favorite. <laughs> That's the nice part about coloring cake. You get to do it your favorite colors, right? So adding a little bit in there and then the... Uh, the icing that's been piped along the top. I'm adding a little bit of that as well. And you'll notice that I come back in with a brown marker and add a little bit of, I'm going to go down the side here first, again, adding my shadow. But in a second here, you're going to see me grab a brown pen and I'm going to add a little bit of shadow back in. You can also do that with a gray pen. Either one works. Here's the brown. So just add a little bit at the very base and then blend it out and if you get too much wipe it on your paper towel you don't want too much of it you don't want it to get all browned out this is just to add some shadows so what I'm doing is I'm working it a little bit hard blending it in with the coordinating color that is underneath and I probably should be cleaning my uh, water pen in between each one too but I don't 
And I do end up having to go back and repair that a tiny bit because of it, but you get the idea, right? So blending that in, and then just adding a little bit of color to the very top where there's looks like there's a little bit of sprinkles and things going on at the top of the cake. So I come back with the markers that I used in the cake and add a little bit of color across the top there. So here are four cards that I've created with these pens. And in summary, I like these pens and I'll definitely keep using them. The price point is excellent and check the links in my description and over on my blog as Arteza gave me a 10% additional discount to share with you good till the end of April. So thanks so much for watching and until next time, toodles! Bye.